Kira Defano. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, uh, Eric Dahlstrom. I started in, I was born in North Carolina and uh, just moved to New Zealand last month by way of California. Uh, uh, I've done some space stuff. <laughs> you'll, you'll know I'm a Kiwi if I can stop there, but... Uh, <laughs> um, so I, I worked on uh, space station design a lot, and most recently, in the last eight years, uh, helping st space startups in the Silicon Valley. So uh, I'm going to go a little backwards. I'm going to tell you what we're doing and then talk about the opportunities and why. Um, uh, so we're creating this global space ecosystem starting in New Zealand. And starting in New Zealand, we're going to serve, uh, support space entrepreneurs uh, and with one tool being an open source platform. And we're working on everything we can to support and help and help each other help ourselves uh, with the training and uh, technical services uh, and funding. We're look, we look at this in three different projects. Uh, uh, one is an on-site programs that provide education and training and networking opportunities, including students and the public. And we're uh, working on a networking platform that connects, uh, allows us to help each other and uh, connects uh, entrepreneurs with the, with the services that they need, and also connects them to the global space community, both for services and also as a market for uh, what they're gonna uh, propose to do. And then we have a, another activity with a funding platform uh, with all this magic blockchain stuff. And Rich is gonna tell us about that next. So, Part of this is, is why space? Uh, well, space has a hundred different applications. Uh, it's uh, important for uh, dealing with climate and environment monitoring, both in New Zealand, around the world, uh, food security, agriculture, uh, response to disasters. Uh, it's, and I'll give you one example later about the, uh, uh, an impact uh, initiative that was just announced two weeks ago. So what's happened now, um, uh, Emmeline was telling you about the exponential technologies that have really transformed things and opened up things, uh, possibilities in the space world. Uh, one is just to make tiny little satellite, satellites uh, very powerful. Uh, one friend of ours, uh, Will Marshall, actually took his phone and launched it into space uh, <laughs> just to see what would happen. and the. And, uh, and it actually, he got it to work. He got, it was able to take images and all the components in it, like accelerometer and GPS unit and things like that were working fine. So, um, uh, and so the, the, the part of this is just the realization of the, the tools that are available in your pocket as, you know, use it for something, something new and something uh, more powerful. Um, and another example that's coming along is hyperspectral imaging, where an ordinary camera takes uh, images in three colors. Hyperspectral can take an image in a hundred colors, and can actually measure the chemistry or the of detect the pollution that's in the water, things like that. And this, I worked on this sensor back in 2005. For, but the current sensor is fits on a chip. And what you can do with hyperspectral sensor, the example is you can identify what kind of plant you're looking at. So with one, with passes of the satellites, you can map where the invasive species are. Uh, Will, after launching his phone into space, he formed a company um, to make small satellites. Uh, can you see the satellite in this picture? Uh, it's over there on the table. Uh, so we, his company uh, has made uh, more than 200 of these things and launched them into space. So he, he now has the largest constellation of Earth-observing spacecraft in the world. 
Uh, and so there's a, a dozen that fly over New Zealand every day. Um, and uh, another friend, Peter, he started playing with making satellites run by Arduino microprocessors. And, uh, and he, made, he also has a commitment to education, so he makes uh, space sensors. I got space sensors in my pocket, <laughs> as one does. <laughs> so uh, the, the, my students uh, put, had this sense, these sen the little sensor chip float over um, Ireland at 30 kilometers a couple months ago to take some data. And Peter puts uh, these sensors on the satellite every time so that, uh, so that students can actually connect and, and get real space data after they've played with it on their, in their classroom. Uh, and Peter's company, Spire, makes these small satellites that track ships around the world. Uh, and so uh, you have, um, uh, he tracks uh, cargo ships all over the place. And maybe that way I can find out where my stuff is in the middle of the Pacific. <laughs> uh, uh, but there's, so how can it, uh, how can you actually uh, solve global problems with these things? There's, one is, is uh, there's terrible things going on out there, you know, illegal fishing. It not only devastates, you know, the environment with uh, uh, overfishing, but it's a, it's a scary part is that this is one of the last remaining places where slavery is occurring in the world. Some of these people are, slave ships uh, that never go to port. Um, I only unload their fish like this, and they've, some people have been trapped on these ships for five years in, in slavery. So uh, two years ago, uh, some reporters tracked uh, one host ship and uh, identified and turned over to the authorities and freed 2,000 slaves. That was tracking one ship. Um, and so, but you need to do it on a large scale. So two, two weeks ago, we had this announcement of uh, a combination of, of uh, Peter's satellites, can see when the ship turns off its tracking signal, Will's satellites sees the ship's meeting, turns over to a bigger satellite to get a better image, and uh, informs authorities. And so now you can, this is a map of where those rendezvous were happening. Notice that they're outside of the circles of the uh, territorial waters. And so instead of one ship, um, just this month, they gave a, submitted a list of hundreds of ships to investigate. So maybe it can re make a real difference. And uh, going to the, uh, we're getting ready for in a couple weeks for the next uh, launch of Rocket Lab. And it's uh, really nice that Peter and Will's satellites are gonna be the first satellites on there to be. And so uh, it's, I think it's really awesome that the first satellites to go to orbit from New Zealand will play a role in solving a global problem. So this is our vision of the, uh, uh, of the future of activity, lots of activity and opportunities across New Zealand uh, and I won't go through all this. I'll just leave it at that. Kia ora. <laughs>